in this lecture we will study cardinal sine function we will study cardinal sine function in short cardinal sine function is known as sinc function there are two types of sinc function the first one is known as unnormalized sinc function the first one is unnormalized sinc function and the second one is normalized sinc function the second one is normalized sinc function in mathematics we use unnormalized sinc function and let's define unnormalized sinc function sinc t is equal to 1 when t is equal to 0 and when t is not equal to 0 sinc t is equal to sine t divided by t this is the definition of unnormalized sinc function in digital signal processing and information theory we use normalized sinc function let's define the normalized sinc function when t is equal to 0 we have 1 as the value of sinc t which is same as unnormalized sinc function so there is no difference when time t is equal to 0 but when time t is not equal to 0 in case of normalized sinc function sinc t is equal to sine pi t divided by pi t so there is difference when time t is not equal to 0 and now we will plot the waveform of unnormalized sinc function and normalized sinc function after plotting the waveform I will explain the advantage of having pi in the expression I am using website named desmos.com to plot the waveforms first I will plot the waveform of unnormalized sinc function this is the waveform of unnormalized sinc function when t is equal to 0 the function is equal to 1 on increasing time t the magnitude of the function will decrease you can see function is equal to sine t divided by t sine t can only take values between 1 and minus 1 t is the denominator and when you increase t the magnitude of the function will decrease you can see the magnitude of the function is decreasing on increasing the time t and when t is equal to infinity sinc t is simply equal to 0 I hope you now understand how we are getting this waveform now we will plot the waveform of normalized sinc function we will plot the waveform of normalized sinc function when t is equal to 0 the normalized sinc function is equal to 1 when t is not equal to 0 it is equal to sine pi t divided by pi t now what is the difference between sine t by t and sine pi t by pi t in case of sine pi t by pi t all the zeros will occur at integers the function will have value equal to 0 only when t is an integer for example at this point the function is equal to 0 and t is equal to 1 which is an integer in the same way at this point the function is equal to 0 and t is an integer if we take this point the function is equal to 0 and t is again an integer t is equal to 6 if we take this point the function is equal to 0 t is equal to minus 6 which is again an integer so in case of normalized sinc function the function will have value equal to 0 only when the independent variable is an integer there is one more difference between unnormalized sinc function and normalized sinc function in case of normalized sinc function the definite integral is equal to 1 over the real numbers I will write this down the definite integral the definite integral is equal to 1 over the real numbers in case of normalized sinc function and we have already seen the another difference between the two sinc functions all zeros of the normalized sinc function will occur when t is an integer now we will discuss the properties of sinc function and I will discuss the properties of normalized sinc function because we use it in digital signal processing sinc function is an energy signal this is the first property sinc function 
is an energy signal and when you calculate the total energy you will find it is equal to pi and if you have a sync function if you have a normalized sync function sync at the total energy e the total energy e is equal to pi by a where pi is the total energy of standard sync function if we have a equal to pi this means the sync function is equal to pi t then the total energy is pi by pi which is equal to 1 you can easily calculate the total energy of the sync function by yourself this is homework for you the third property I have already explained when t is equal to infinity sync t sync t is equal to 0 so this is all for this lecture if you have any doubt related to sync functions you may ask in the comment section I will end this lecture here See you in the next one.